what's going on internet so today what I'm gonna do is just share a little bit of information about this recent mural that I painted of two of the players on the Denver Nuggets this wall basically is a wall that I get to paint uh, pretty frequently and the person that I'm covering up is Trina she's a Denver nurse I painted her last year but I usually will refresh this wall up uh, often mainly because it falls apart and it's so complicated to actually just repair stuff it's easier just to sometimes do an entirely new mural i even found an oreo last time i tried to repair the mural which you know caught me off guard so i was like you know what this wall just needs an entirely new facelift and because we are in the playoffs for the first time in nba history i wanted to paint two of the favorite players, Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. And I'm scaling this up using the doodle grid method and mainly the tape grid method. I actually used it for the first time on this mural I did in Houston and it went really well. And it just allows me to sort of uh, scale things up using that sort of doodle grid methodology but without having a ton of squiggly lines and numbers and letters that I have to cover up. So the tape grid method is amazing and I'll have a video tutorial attached to this video as well. But you can kind of see closely at the wall where the paint is actually peeling away from the wall. So I just made sure that the two main figures fell in between those cracks and was safe from, you know, just the minor peeling that is happening. But to tell you a little bit more about this wall, this is a wall I usually get to paint up every year but there's no funding for it there's no resources for it so I actually have to come up with the resources myself and that's not a big deal because it's not such a large wall I pretty much can get to any area with this ladder so I'm using paint that I have in my studio because I have a lot of extra paint from a previous project and because this wall is close to my studio I'm always able to go back and re-up on supplies if I need to and one big question that I get a lot especially while painting this mural that had the Denver Nuggets all over it and the players all over it basically everyone was asking did the Denver Nuggets ask you to paint this did they pay you to paint this and the answer is no a lot of the murals that you see on my page on my website a lot of those murals are free basically I've paid for them myself I funded them myself the owner of the building basically said hey you're able to paint on this you get permission and I have access to paint on that wall so a lot of the murals that I do are basically ones that I fund myself and that's because I love the paint I would be outside painting if you know no one paid me at all really the biggest burden is just my time so this mural took me about three and a half days to paint I scaled it up the first day, started sketching it right now the second day, worked again on the third day and basically had another day to sort of uh, add some more detailed work. But this is going to be an ongoing mural because throughout the finals and even after the finals, when we win the championship, I'm going to add more to this mural, things like text, things like trophies, some of the other players in there as well. But I think it's a fun way of still keeping this mural active so that people who are driving by can also still see me work on it rather than it being sort of like a, a concrete finished piece because a lot of people were just stopping by just to see you know how the mural is made seeing the in progress shots all that good stuff so for me i think just keeping this uh, a part of that sort of finals uh playoff series story i think is really cool but also like i said it keeps me active and it keeps the mural active as well think about that next time you're on your project how you can actually continue this project so that it's not just you know you're painting a wall and then you're done you're actually being able to activate the wall and still, you know, keep the viewer, keep the audience, keep the, uh, the the community engaged in the process because I think that's where you really gain an attachment with, you know, your collectors and supporters and people that really just want to see you do more walls. And also, too, it's like when people see you paint, they start to talk and network with you and uh, get active. For this mural, one of the most time consuming parts of it was even before I put paint on the wall, and that was trying to find references that I could use. 
mainly because my style and my process requires, you know, certain elements in a reference photo. Mainly the lighting is something that I need to have in a photo that sort of has the, the drop shadows and the casted shadows that add more depth and more story to it. But when you're looking for uh, reference photos for athletes, a lot of times their faces are contorted because, you know, they're, they're playing a sport. So it's not the, always the best photos that you're getting. And sometimes it's not the most well photographed athlete as well. And then sometimes the athlete doesn't have like sort of a, a memorable feature about their aesthetic. So, you know, like James Harden has a beard or, you know, some athletes may have crazy hair that you can really just tell from a mile away that it's them. So with Jamal Murray, it's more of the goatee and the hair. And with Jokic, you know, he doesn't really have a lot of distinguishing features, mainly just the stubble on his uh, face because he can't really grow a beard. So I kind of focused on making sure people could see that sort of uh, stubbly mustache and sort of uh, facial hair that he does have but that was the most time-consuming part of this project making sure that I had the right reference photo that could make this wall really pop otherwise it was a really great project just to make sure that I stay active in between projects painting so that I'm always brushing up on different skill sets and learning new things and experimenting as much as I can like this one the hand that uh, Jamal Murray is sort of throwing out is weirdly contorted with the finger so sometimes when you're looking at it a certain way, you may not know what it is, but this was a great opportunity for me to practice painting fingers and hands because that's something that is very difficult for a lot of artists. Even AI hates painting fingers and hands. So, you know, that's something that I need to always work on. If you're an artist and you're looking to do more murals and just get better at murals, I would say find a practice wall that you can continually change up anytime you need to mainly because that is the only way that you get better you have to keep practicing practice with new technique new materials new processes for example this is a new brand of spray paint that I'm trying out for the first time but I'm practicing with this brand of spray paint so that if I have to use it again on a paid project I know exactly how it works and the brand is called dang d-a-n-g I get it from bombing science and it's really a Affordable and the colors work out really well. I don't know how it lasts long term, but they, it works out really well for me. But uh, hopefully you'll like the talk through in terms of how this project came together. I'll try to do more of these and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.